Got your Bible with you tonight? Let's turn to the book of Daniel in the fifth chapter of Daniel. Oh, brother Daniel. His name means my God is judge. My God is judge. That's his name. My God is judge. He talked about that a lot of times. Made a lot of statements about God and what God would do and all these things and prophesied a lot. And Daniel was a mighty man of God, but we're not going to talk about him tonight. In Daniel chapter 5, and let's look at verse 25, uh, chapter 3, chapter 3, Daniel chapter 3. Let's look at verse 25, 26. You found that? Say amen. Please. Uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 25. And he answered and said, Lo, talking about King Nebuchadnezzar now, they done throw these men in the furnace. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. Notice what he said, see four. And they have no hurt in the form of the fourth man. It's like the Son of God. They threw three in, but now he sees four. And that fourth man is like the Son of God. I believe somebody told him who it was. I believe God the Holy Ghost said this, the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth. And come hither, then Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. I want to preach to us on a thought tonight using this God of a divine interruption. God of a divine interruption. How many in here would like to have a divine interruption? Thank God. How many has ever had one? Hallelujah. I'm telling you what, brother, it was wonderful when it took place. Let us ask the will of God to be done here tonight. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus, our Savior, God, to look upon us with mercy and grace. Thank you that your ears are open unto us. I'm praying tonight, God, for divine interruption in this house tonight. I bind every devil, every demon, every spirit that would come against us. And I claim the victory for every home and every family here tonight. Lord God, I praise and thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord God, for the victory through Christ our Savior. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Shake somebody's hand and tell them if you believe in a divine interruption or not. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe in a divine interruption. I've seen great, mighty moves of God. I mean, just come in, I mean, instantly and moved, and there was a divine interruption. But I want you to remember something tonight, folks. Now listen, when you stand up for God, God will stand up for you. I said, when you stand up for God, He's going to stand up for you. I, I don't mean that you stand up and make a claim that you're standing for God and then the next news you know we look around or somebody does and where are you? I'm talking about taking a permanent stand for God. When you say, look, I stand for God in this situation or I stand for God in this matter and about the time you see Him firing up that furnace and... Uh, it's getting hotter, and you, you got a second thought or a second opportunity there. I'm talking about when you stand for God and you've got it, your mind made up uh, that this is it. Uh, I'm standing for God uh, regardless of what comes or what goes. Imagine these boys now. There's three men of God here. They're out there. This idol's been made. And you know what? Everybody's got the word whenever the music is. Everybody bows and worship the God of this world. And everybody falls down. There's three left standing there. 
So, you know, when the king heard the news and he gets upset, calls them around, and they let him know right off, you know, we're not bowing to your God. That's it. He gets mad. He gets fired up. He says, fire up the furnace. Get it seven times hotter than it's ever been before. The men that grabbed them up began to tie them up. But you know what? They were still willing to stand. Where are those people at today? I said, where are they today? But listen to me. When you stand up for God, I'm telling you, God will stand up for you. If somebody say amen. Church, listen. When you, when you are being tested for your testimony, I mean when you're tested for your faith or tried for your faith or your faith is tried or for your confidence, you can rest assured. I said you can rest assured and you can rest assured with confidence that the Lord God Almighty who is for you, He will be with you. I said He will be with you. He's not going to run off and leave you. He's not going to leave you stranded. But most of the time the devil will bring old fear along and he'll say let them stand for a little while and we're gonna, we just going to show them how brave they are. Amen. And the spirit of fear comes and they begin to shake and tremble and say well maybe God ain't with me. Maybe God didn't hear me. Maybe this thing ain't coming to pass after all. But I come to tell us tonight that God is a God of a divine interruption and it's for those people that's got their mind made up. I'm standing for God. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, the Lord God Almighty who is for you, He will be with you and He will bring you out. I said He will bring you out. Hallelujah. Been in this way a long time. And I've watched people over the years, brother, put their confidence in God, standing on His Word, standing on His faith, and God never failed them. Never failed them. Listen, He is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able to bear? I said, you hear what He said? This is the Word of God. He is faithful. He will not suffer you to be, a, to be tempted above that you are able to bear. Amen. Listen, he, if he brought you to it, Brother Clyde, he's going to bring you through it. You're a child of God. You belong to him. Every footstep is ordered by the Lord. And those which are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. Amen. And the daughters of God. If you're in a troubled place, God's brought you there and he's going to bring you through it. Amen. Somebody worship God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Church, God is. God is a God of a divine interruption. And that's true. That's the truth. I said it's not something made up, not something man-made. It's not a man-made illustration, or it's not a man-made something to try to make people feel good. I look at these men, and not only them, there's others in this book that stood for God. And brother, there was a divine interruption in their life. Anybody believe that? Amen. You think about it. This, this happening, what we read about you, think about what has taken place with these three men of God. This is real. I said it's real. The furnace is seven times more hotter and that I looked at that up. It said seven times more hotter than what you could even dream. I believe the bricks has done turned white hot in there. Amen. Remember the Lord God Almighty He is no respecter of person. It is a sin for God or anybody else to have respect to person. If you like somebody else better than you do another person. You are a respecter of person and it is sin. You hear what I'm saying? That God does is no respecter of person. James tells us that for us to have respect of person to anybody, he said it is a sin. You see, there's one life in this body and there's one love that governs this life and that is God. And God is no respecter of person. He never was and he never will be. Amen. The Lord God Almighty is is no respect of person. Church, he has no favorites at all. There is no favorites among God. I know some people, you know, they could do among their own children. But listen, God has no favorites at all, none whatsoever. I'm glad of that. I'd be way down on a post somewhere or another. 
I tell you, I'd have to try to find a few crumbs. I was talking to a preacher this afternoon, you know, up the country, and he was telling me what he preached on Sunday morning. I thought, my word, son. I just let him rave on a little bit. He was preaching on, you know, being satisfied with the crumbs. I said, my Lord. Ah, Lord, have mercy. I ain't never satisfied with the crumbs. Hallelujah, I'm an heir. I sit at the table. I don't have to sit down or crawl around on the floor, you know. You know, this is the children's bread. Hallelujah, listen to me. Now, don't believe the lie of the devil. You hear what I'm saying? The devil's going to lie to you. He's sending a line to some of you there tonight thinking this ain't going to happen, that ain't going to happen, and it can't happen like this. He's a lying devil. I said he's a lying devil. You got to get him nailed down where he is and be sure that he is a liar. Don't believe the lies of the devil, but listen close. Listen what I'm going to tell you. What he has done for others, he will do for you also. I said what he has done for others, he will do for you also. He is no respecter of person. That is truth. I'm telling you the truth tonight. What he has done. <laughs> excuse me for others uh, he will do for you also uh, listen what he's done for others uh, it is his pattern uh, of his plan uh, of what he will do for you uh, I said that's what it is uh, well God will do something for somebody else over yonder to show you uh, what I did for them I'll do for you uh, they trusted me I brought them through uh, you trust me and I'll bring you through uh, that's what it is uh, I said that's what it is uh, what God has ever done for anybody else he done it to show us what he can do and what he will do for each other amen he loves us all the same his power is for us all the same his glory is for us all the same there is none different in the sight of God almighty what he's done for others is a revelation of what he will do for you and he cannot lie said he cannot lie Amen. Church, listen. The Lord our God, He specializes in the impossible. Yes, He does. He specializes in the impossible. He specializes in that which is uncomprehendable. Amen. He specializes in that which is impossible to mentally understand. There are things that we mentally, we cannot understand these things, but God specializes. He's God. I said He's God. He's the Almighty. He's the true and the living God. He's our God. And not only is He our God, but He's our Father also. Hallelujah. He is the Lord our God. He is God of a divine interruption. Eruption, and that's truth. That's my God. Do you know it? Church, listen. When they came forth out of the midst of the fire, according to the word of God, the Lord our God had changed everything. He had changed everything. He had changed what is normal to be abnormal. So I can't believe that. Well, that's why you never get nothing from God. You're trying to figure God out and try to figure out how he's going to do it. I'm telling you, he's God. Just believe that he's going to do it. Amen. He changed the normal to be the abnormal. He changed what is supposed to be to the impossible. Listen, when they walked out of that furnace of fire, they all saw that the fire had no power over them at all. That's real fire. These are real men. This is a real happening. This ain't something I, I know maybe it's got some spiritual meanings to it somewhere down the road, but it really truly happened. And I'm telling you, they walked out of that place and they all saw that the fire had no power over them at all. Listen, church, your trials will not make you worse. I said they'll not make you worse. They'll not make you less than what you are, but your trials are going to make you better. I said, whatever you're going through, it's going to make you better. Everything you say, I can't see that. Well, don't try to figure it out. Just put your confidence in the Lord. What you're going through, if you'll trust God, it's going to make you better. But you don't, not bitter, but better. I know folks are getting bitter, but don't get bitter. It's going to make you better. Anybody believe that or not? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Listen to me. That is if you will allow it to. You know, the fire 
It lost its dominion over the men of God. These three men of God, that fire lost its dominion over them. How can that be? He's God. That's how it can be. Amen. He is God. The hairs of the head were not even singed. That's impossible. Yes, it is. Neither was their clothes changed, nor the smell of smoke upon them. That's God. That's who we serve. He done that for them. He'll do that for you. He'll do that for me. Whatever you're going through, God will He'll bring you through it. Amen. He is a God of a divine interruption. There was a divine interruption in the life of these men of God. And the reason that there was such a divine interruption in their, in their lives, they stood for God. I said they stood for God. And when they stood for God, it was God standing for them. Hear me. We don't try it out to see if it's going to get any better. I'm going to try it today. If it don't get no better tomorrow, I'm going to do something else. I'll try it for a little while and see how it turns out and maybe I'll do something else go ahead and do it you might as well forget about it but if you'll make up your mind I'm standing for God I'm standing on God's word this thing's going to be alright I said it's going to be alright by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony they were made overcomers I said they were made overcomers hallelujah you can be an overcomer when you stand for God somebody say amen. amen there was a divine interruption in the lives of these men they stood for God and God stood for them the night I'd like to know who who in this house will stand for God who who would stand for God hallelujah who will trust God tonight who will put their confidence in God tonight? Who would stand up right in the midst of all of these people tonight and say, I'll trust God. I'll put my confidence in God. I'll stand on God's word. I'll trust God. I'll trust God with all my heart. I'll trust God with all my strength. I'll stand for God because I want God to stand for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, this book tells me if God be for you, who can be against you? Hear what I'm saying. God said that. The Word of God said, if God be for you, who or what can defeat you? There's nothing that can defeat a man or a woman of God who's standing on that Word. Listen, if God is not against you, He is for you. There's no middle ground. Either He's against you or He's for you. But I know He's for you tonight. The devil will tell you, how do you know that God is for you? That's a very simple question to answer. To know if God's for you or not. Just turn all the way around. Get a far-seeing telescope and look back 1900 years and there's God hanging on a cross there. He's given His life for you. I said for you. That's why I know God's for you. He wouldn't be dying for you for the fun of it or just to make a big show out of it. John said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. That's you. That's me. God's for us. We are to rejoice over that. Thank God He's for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God is not against you, He's for you. The Lord God Almighty he is never against his church. He's never against you. He's not working to beat you down. He's not working trying to destroy you. You hear what I'm saying? God is not working to beat you down and to make you less than what you are. He's working for you. He is with you. And the things that he's allowing you to go through, if you'll listen to God, he's going to bring you through. You're going to be better than ever. You're going to see a divine interruption after a while. You hear me? But you got to be willing to stand. Stand for God. He's standing for you. Amen. Amen. The devil will lie to you. He'll lie to you, Brother Clyde. Yeah, he can't tell the truth. If he ever goes to putting his arm around and say, you know, boy, you're all right. You're saved. You're going to heaven as sure as anybody else gets there. You better find your place to pray, and you better ask God to save you. Because you're as lost as a goose in a hailstorm, I'm telling you. You're lost, lost, lost. But if you'll begin to pray and seek the Lord, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. God will reveal himself to you. Amen. You know, the devil's crowd, 
they sent a letter out to King he uh, Hezekiah, and, and it said in that letter, it said, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trustest, deceive thee. This is the devil's crap. Don't let, don't let that preacher up there deceive you. He talks faith all the time, and I live faith all the time. You hear what I'm saying? I live what I preach. I live, I practice what I preach. I, I practice, ask that woman back yonder, practice what I preach. God ain't never failed me. Always brought me through. I, I, the reason that most, some preachers can't preach on faith or healings, and they don't practice that what they're preaching, brother. Practice what I preach, amen. And you know, the devil is a lying devil. He said, thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, let not thy God in whom thou trustest deceive thee, saying that Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hands of the king of Hezekiah, of, of Hesai. He said, behold, thou hast heard what the king of of Azariah has done to all the land by destroying them utterly, and shall thou be delivered. You know what he did, this king? He went through all the land, and he destroyed the land and took over the land. He took their idols, their idol gods, and they put them on the back of chariots and paraded them up and down the country and said, look what we've done to their gods. We've destroyed them. Some burnt in two. Some chopped up their, their whatever god it was that they were worshiping. They went through and they said they got there to Jerusalem and they said, listen, your god ain't no different than this god. What we've what we done to them, we're going to do to you also. What happened to them is going to happen to you also. Don't believe all that stuff that God is for you. Don't believe all that stuff that there's a divine interruption for you. You just look around at all these other people. Look what's happened to them. Look how they didn't make it. They trusted in their God and they was defeated. Amen. Their God was no God at all. I said their God was no God at all. The man, the woman, the boy, the girl that's ever put their confidence in the Lord God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has always been triumphantly and victorious, made it through. You hear what I'm saying? I'm telling you, he is a God of a divine interruption. Amen. Bible said in Hezekiah, he received the letter of the hand of the messenger, and when he read it, Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and he spread it before God. Said, I got a letter I want you to read. I want you to look at him, what's going on, Lord. I want you to see what the devil said. But Lord, my confidence is in you. My confidence is in you. Church, God of a divine interruption, he is for you. He is now God, not was God. Not later God, but now God. Listen to me, church. That same night, that same night that Hezekiah took that letter to the altar and prayed over it that same night, there was a divine interruption from heaven. The Lord God Almighty dispatched one angel out of heaven, one angel. He came down with a drawn sword, and he walked through that host that was against the church, and by daylight the next morning, the Bible said there was 185,000 dead corpses. Only one angel was sent. Amen. I said only one angel was sent. The Lord our God sent one angel to the aid of the king when he called upon him. He said, call upon me. I will answer thee. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He cannot fail. I said he cannot fail. Somebody love Jesus. Somebody love. He's worthy tonight. I tell you, we're living in a time when people need a divine interruption. Hear what I'm saying. Amen. 
God is looking for people that will stand for him. When Elijah told that woman that had that meal barrel, and he said to her, he said, bring me a cake first. She said, ain't got but one. Ain't got but one. And he said, told her what the Lord said. The Lord said, you bring me one, and everything will be all right. The devil, no doubt, was somewhere around and said, don't listen to him. He's lying to you. You got a little boy there that's hungry. He's pulling on your dress, wanting something to eat and I know somebody will say well that's foolish that's my boy it's my responsibility I'm going to give it to him she went in the house and she dumped it all out patted on the bottom of it poured all the oil she had in there mixed up that cornmeal brother I want you to know she fixed the cake and she brought it back out listen sometimes God's got to empty you out before he can do anything for you so I said God's got to empty you out before God can do anything for you Maybe you're full of pride. Maybe you're full of self. Well, I don't know what you might be full of, but if you'll let God empty you out first, when he empties you out first, I'm telling the supernatural takes over then. I said the supernatural will take over then. When you lay aside every weight and every sin, that does so easily, but said God's going to work a work in your life. Amen. She emptied it all out. You know what she poured out? The natural. Some man had ground that. Some man had bought that and put it in there. But I'm telling you, when she poured out the natural, I want you to know God poured in the spiritual. Amen. That same night, brother, next morning they woke up. I'm telling you, imagine 185,000. I'll tell you, they had to dig a lot of holes out there. A lot of burying going on. Church, with God for you, there's more with you, more in power and more in authority than those that are against you. Hear what I'm saying. With God for you, they are more with you, more in power, more in authority than they are against you. Amen. Listen, the gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. I said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. I remember in the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew, whenever Jesus said, I'm going to build me a church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. They got their orders right then. I mean, right then, the king of glory right then, the creator of the heavens and the earth spoke to the gates of hell and said, you shall not ever prevail against this church. They got their orders. I said, they got their orders. The gates of hell shall never prevail against the church of the living God. You can go to bed on that. I said you can go to bed on that. They got orders from headquarters, mister, and they cannot go beyond that. Listen, church, in order to receive a divine interruption from the God of a divine interruption, hear me now, no matter what, don't ever give up. I said don't ever give up. Just wait, it's coming. And I said it's coming hallelujah I said hallelujah me and that woman back there have been in a lot of tight places over the years brother I'm talking about in spiritual battles physical battles financial battles brother I want you to know we put God to the test we put him to the test said God this is it either we're going down or going up one he never failed us I said God has never failed us one time Amen. You look at Jacob. You know, he's a con man. You think you know some cons. That Jacob was nothing but a con man. He's a deceiver. Jacob is undesirable. He don't deserve anything from God at all. And he knows it. But when Jacob got very desperate before God, he was determined that God of a divine interruption was going to change his life. He believed that. He believed that God was going to change his life, change his ways, and meet all of his needs. Listen, folks. What God has, what God has done for others, he will do for you. He is God of a divine interruption. That's him. Jacob had come to the end of his life. He's sick and tired of being Jacob. 
You'll never get nowhere till you're sick and tired of where you're at, what you're going through, and all that. Hear what I'm saying? Jacob has come to the end of his life. He's sick and tired of being Jacob. Sick and tired of being a con man. Sick and tired of being a deceiver. Sick and tired of being undesirable and he wanted a change. Church, if you're sick and tired of being what you are, who you are, just sick and tired of being sick and tired, listen, God is a God of a divine interruption. He's a God of a divine interruption. Hear what I said? He's a God of a divine interruption. Hallelujah. Jacob said to the Lord, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. He had his mind made up. I'm at the right place. Got a hold of the right one. There's nowhere else to go. He did away with all other options. He did away with all other options. Most people tonight don't do away with all other options. You know, they got one here, one there, one here, one there. I'm going to try this. You might as well go to the options. But when you get rid of all the options, Brother Sluter, Jacob got rid of all the options. Because he latched on to God and said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now what would it be? What would it be? What would it be if everyone who came here tonight had that same attitude? What would it be? Well, what would it be if everybody said, I'm going to church tonight not to be entertained, not just to go there to hear the singing or to spend time listening to Gene Smith preach, but I'm going to church tonight and I'm not leaving like I came. I'm going there tonight to receive what I have need of from God. I'm going to be like Jacob. I'm going to get in that altar And there's nowhere else to go. I have no other options. And I'm going to hold on to him till I get everything that I have needed. What if everybody that came here tonight had that same attitude? What would take place in the Bethel Church? If everybody said, I've come for a divine interruption from God in my life. And I will not leave like I came. What would it be, Brother Anderson? Church, listen. It wouldn't be no different than it was on the day of Pentecost. When suddenly, unexpected, there was a divine interruption from God. The world changed. What took place changed the whole world. The kingdom of God and of Christ was now established in man with power. Now, as he was, so are they. Holy, perfect, and without blame, faultless, the sons of God before him in love. They went there for a divine interruption. What would happen if Bethel came to church every time they came to church? They came for divine interruption. They came for a healing. They came for a miracle. They came for strength. Whatever it is they have need of, just a closer walk with Him, just willing to give more of themselves to Him. I tell you what, folks, Bethel will be a different church. Said Bethel will be a different church. Hell would get upset. Hell would get all excited. Jacksonville would know that Bethel has got a mind that's made up. I ain't turning God loose till I get everything he died for. Hallelujah. It wouldn't be no different than what it was in the day down at the house of Cornelius. Now Cornelius, he was considered by the church, you know, the Jews as an unclean person. 
He didn't look on him too sporty or his kind of Gentiles, but they, what, they knew or they felt like he wasn't worthy of anything God had. Cornelius was a man, though, who wanted God. He was ready to swallow his pride. Call them Jews down here, God told him. Call them Jew boys down here. He was ready to swallow his pride. That, that's a lot of reason. Folks ain't getting much from God. They just eat up with pride. You know, they won't let pride go. Pride's keeping them from doing the right thing, getting that altar, seeking God until he blesses them. Don't want nobody to think I ain't spiritual, that I ain't up here, that I'm a needy person down here. But the Bible said that, you know, Cornelius wanted God. And the Bible said, and while Peter preached to him, suddenly, there was a divine interruption. A hungry heart crying out to God. A thirsty soul crying out to God. A needy man wanting God. Willing to shove pride aside. Open the doors. Come on in, boys. I want prayer. I want to hear what God's got to say. And there was a divine interruption as it did on the day of Pentecost. And now, and now, the unclean is clean. The unworthy is now worthy. Now the unholy is perfect and without blame. Now the unclean is faultless. The sons of God before him in love. Now they're all equal. I said now they're all equal. They're all one. They're all in the same kingdom. All a part of the same body. There was a divine interruption. Hallelujah. 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 Folks, listen to me. God is a God of a divine interruption. Amen. I've just come to tell you that. Come to stir up your pure mind by way of remembering that. Look at the man who had had an infirmity. The Bible said for 38 years. He couldn't walk. He couldn't move very much on his own. He didn't have a friend in the world to help him around. He had been sick. He had been like this for 38 years. 38 years. Question, how long have you been sick? Or how long have you been in the, this place where you're at? How long have you been there? How long have you been suffering this or had these problems that you got? Church, this can be your night. But guess who it's up to? Just guess who it's up to? Hallelujah. Just guess who it's up to? How long you been sick? How long you been battling these battles? How long have you been going through this situation that you've been trying to crawl over and crawl under for years maybe? Or whatever, months? Whatever you've been trying to get over, under, or around? Listen. This can be your night. This can be your night. This could be your night for divine interruption from God. Listen to the words of Jesus. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus, God of a divine interruption. He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So the God of a divine interruption is in our midst tonight. I know there's two or three that's here. I know there's at least two or three here tonight. And where there are two or three, the God of a divine interruption is in our midst. Church, the man after 38 years, the Bible said, immediately was made whole. Immediately was made whole. Took up his bed and walked. He didn't have to go to rehab. He didn't have to go anywhere else. He didn't have to take anything else. He didn't have to take walking lessons, running lessons. It was a divine interruption from God that didn't need any assistance. Just obey him. And it came to pass. After 38 years. 
God of a divine interruption has come by for him that day. He is here for you. He's here tonight for me. You do not have to leave like you came. If you're sick, you can be healed. I believe in miracles. I'm not a miracle worker, but there's a miracle worker that can flow through us. Amen. I'm telling you, if you need a miracle, there are miracle workers here. The healer is here. The deliverer is here. The provider is here. I'm telling you, salvation is in the house. Church, because of Jacob's determination, he received more than what he could ever imagine. He just said, bless me. He didn't put a handle on nothing. He said, bless me. And the Lord gave him a new nature. Changed his nature right there. You're no longer a Jacob. No, sir. You're no longer a Jacob. You're going to be an Israel. You're going to be a prince. And he gave him power with God and man. Amen. When the three men of God came walking up out of the furnace of fire, I'm telling you, the world saw the glory of God. The world saw that. After their standing for God and God standing with them, they were promoted in the kingdom. I'm telling you, God will promote you. He's just waiting on somebody to take him at his word, stand on his word, believe his word. When God Almighty works signs, wonders, and miracles for us, church, it is a revealing of his glory. He's revealing his glory. He's revealing his glory. He is revealing what he has done for you. He will do for others. That's what he do. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. I was talking to, bro to Brother Randall Womack this afternoon on the telephone. His wife had surgery a few days ago. Been checking in to find out how they were doing, how she was doing. He was telling me she's doing better. Got to talking to him and He's going to church, praying in the altar, praying, said he got saved, talking about the Lord. I said, man, don't give up. I said, don't just hang in there. You could tell there's a change in the man. Been praying for him a long time. But I remember the very night that his wife got saved, he was telling me that there was a football player there, and his daddy was high up in the city around there in Prattville, Alabama, where they live at, and this young man has come down with Lou Gehrig's disease, and they're having all kind of fundraisers to help them out there financially in every way. And Randall was telling some of them, he said, you know, Pam had Lou Gehrig's disease. He said, but God healed her. And, 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 and you know, I, me and Precious there, and maybe some of you were there, but, you know, I remember the day they told her what she had, how long she probably had to live and the things she was going to go through. And there wasn't nothing they could do for her. They didn't know nothing about the disease. She looked at him and she said, but my God is a healer. And she said, I'm going to trust him. She put her confidence in the Lord her God. And one Sunday night, brother, she walked out of there no longer. With Lou Garrett's disease. Put her confidence in the Lord. I'm telling you, God is a God of a divine interruption. He will do it. He won't withhold nothing from you. And whatever He does, He does it as a revealing of His glory, revealing through you what He will do for others. God is a divine, God of a divine interruption. Just think about that. Hallelujah. Just come on up here at this piano, if you will. Play something. Just think about that. Everybody in here or to grab a hold of this message tonight, say, you know, that's for me. That's mine. I believe God is going to work for me. And I ain't leaving like I came in Jesus' name. Bound or pressed. Bound or pressed. Sick, tormented, or Lame, for the Holy Ghost of Acts, he's still the same. Hallelujah. Just believe God. Stand with me if you will do it. Hallelujah.
Father, I thank you for the privilege of preaching your word, preaching on faith, but God preaching on the faith of the Son of God and not mine or ours, but on the faith of the Son of God. Knowing, Lord God, there's nothing that's impossible with you tonight. But God, we come and we can go. God, you haven't took that desire will away from us. So tonight, God, I pray that you'll strengthen us and help us tonight. Just all put it all in your hands tonight. God, in the name of Jesus, whosoever will, come and seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Who will seek the Lord?